Hello and welcome to another update video and tutorial about Bybit. Today we take a look at how you can actually set a stop loss when using Bybit and when trading on the spot market. So what you need to do before you can set a stop loss here on the spot market is you need to have some BTC. So you just trigger a buy order, you buy some BTC. I won't do that now because I already have some BTC here um, or at least a small value of BTC here on the exchange for the purpose of showing you how you can actually set a stop loss. Why would you set a stop loss? Well, there's two main reasons for setting a stop loss. The first reason is if you buy and you have identified a certain technical support level that you believe if the price drops below that support level, it will lead to further losses. So in order to protect you from hanging on to those losses, you can set a stop loss on the exchange so that the exchange will sell your BTC or your assets. It works obviously with all assets. It will sell your assets when the price goes be below that support level, below that technical support level. Just an illustration here on the chart. I mean, this is only the 15 minute chart, but it works on any time frame, depending on which time frame you're trading. Let's say we are on the 15 minute time frame. Let's say you buy Bitcoin. Let's say you bought Bitcoin somewhere down here, maybe around $16,400, just when it came down here. You believe that if the price drops below the last swing low here at 16,336, that you want to get out of the trade because then the price will most likely drop much further, maybe to 15 and a half K or so, um, just for you know ex example purposes here. And that's one reason to protect yourself from losses because one main mistake that many traders make is they hang on to losses and they get out of profitable trades too quickly. And here you can see the other benefit of a stop loss, which is not to get out of a profitable trade too quickly because let's say you bought down here and let's say this trade moves up and carries on moving up and you just want to make sure that you are cashing in some profits, but you don't want to take some profits yet for whatever reason. Maybe you don't want to reduce your position size. Maybe you don't want to sell yet because of taxes or whatever. So there is a reason to move up um, or there is a, a possibility to, to change your stop loss order and to move it up below the last swing low, for example, so that should the stop loss get triggered, it gets triggered in profit. So you're basically moving the stop loss with the price if the trade is profitable. This helps you to uh, avoid to get out of a trade too quickly. Okay, those were the two reasons of why most people would set a stop loss. How to do that? Now, I already have um, a small value of BTC on the exchange here to show you how it works. What you would do, you would set in this case, if you bought BTC at a certain level, you would select a sell order a sell stop loss order basically. Yeah, You select here on the exchange TPSL because you can also take profits the same way. But this tutorial is about stop losses. So what we want to do, we make it easy first. We talk about the market order. Let's say I bought BTC at, let's say 16,400. As I said in the example, I want to protect myself from losses should the price drop below 16,336. So how, how would I do this? So first of all, I select market order in the most simple form. It means that when the price is triggered, so there's a trigger price, that is the price when I want the order to trigger. When this order, when I type in this order price or this trigger price, let's say 16,000, let's say 330, because I want to set it below the technical target. Some people choose to set it uh, even a little bit lower below a technical target, um, but this is only how to actually do it. So if I set this trigger price, because I selected the market order, it will sell my BTC as a market order when this price triggers. Does that mean they are definitely sold for 16,330? No, absolutely not. Here's where the order book comes into play. If there is currently nobody asking for BTC at that price, then it won't fill. So with a market order, it just tries to fill it as soon as the trigger price is activated it tries to fill it as a market order well not filling it tries to sell it in that case it tries to sell it as a market order for the best possible price you know, that you get the best possible well you get the best possible price when selling your BTC yeah but the trigger price is 16330 it could be 
that nobody wants to buy BTC until it reaches 16,300. So that will be your price. So that is the risk with the market order that in a very volatile environment and should there not be many people buying and selling BTC, so should there be little volume, it could be that when the market order is triggered, it will sell quite, or that the order or the, your BTC will sell quite far away from the actual trigger price. Yeah, this could be when there is a huge red candle, you know, maybe a whale is selling at the same time. And it could be that the whale is selling to all of these people who want to buy Bitcoin at that price and that your order will get triggered a bit later. So in the worst case, maybe it won't triggered un be triggered until 16K in the worst case. Yeah, just to give an extreme example, that most likely will not happen with Bitcoin. Um, reality is that there are so many people trading Bitcoin, especially on large exchanges with a lot of volume, that you will get your order filled or the order completed, the stop loss actually um, done and completed at a price very close to your trigger price. That's the reality. But it could be that it will be triggered quite far away. Some, for some people, the price they actually get eventually will be too low. Yeah, so they will be annoyed if the price sell, or let's say your BTC will eventually sell at 15K. Now that is a completely utopian uh, scenario because if you get a stop loss triggered at that price, it is very unlikely that the price drops over a grand to be actually um, executed, okay? But it could be in an extreme case, just to show you an example and explain that. And because some people might not want to sell it that low, they will use a limit order. I will explain that as well. But let's first finish the market order. So it will get triggered, yeah? And it will be executed at the price as close as possible to the trigger price. You cannot enter anything here at the order price because it's a market order. So it will try to execute it as soon as possible. And then the quantity. So how many, that, that stop loss to how much of my BTC portfolio should it apply, yeah? 50%, yeah? Do I want to get stopped out of 50% of my portfolio? Or maybe 100%. So do I want to get rid of all of my BTC if it goes below that level or only 75, 50%? Then I click on sell BTC. I'll do that now. And we will see it as a stop loss order here. You can see it, it's a market order. It's sell, order quantity, market price. Yeah, it will, it will execute at the market price. That's the trigger price and it's not triggered yet. It's the order time and I will cancel it now. And that's it. Now, what about the limit order then? Okay, so we've just talked about with the market order, you have a trigger price. You've got the same thing here as well. So let's set it at the same price, 16,330. With the market order, it will execute at the best possible price, but it could drop quite low, yeah? Depending on volatility and volume yeah and how many people are actually bidding for that btc at that price now with the limit order you can select you can select actually a limit yeah so let's say you select a limit of 16000 that means if btc goes below 16330 yeah below this if it goes below that level um it will try to fill the order or it will try to sell your BTC within the range of 16,330 and 16K. If it cannot be executed, that order, if, they, if you don't find a buyer in that range, then the order will not be executed. That's the problem that many people have in a very volatile market. If they set the order price too close to the trigger price and it's very volatile, there is a risk that a limit order doesn't get executed because if it is below 15 or below 16K and it hasn't executed, it will not execute. So with a limit order, there is no guarantee that a order gets executed. You need to understand that it's very, very important. That is the reason why I personally, in most cases, when setting a stop loss, I use a market order. Okay. And again, I can select here again the quantity. That's the same story. I can click now on sell BTC and it will appear here as a limit order. And that's how you can set, uh, set a stop loss um, using the spot market on Bybit. And I hope that was helpful. I hope you liked the tutorial. 
If you like to support the channel, you can sign up on Bybit using my affiliate link that you can find below the video and in the video description. Sometimes they offer a bonus or benefit when people sign up. Um, this always changes, so I cannot guarantee that, but best to check out when you click on the link. Other than that, I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit a like button, leave a comment and subscribe and see you in the next video. Bye bye.